And good afternoon, everybody. Tyler Rowland coming to you here from from Institute, West Virginia. And what an exciting night it's going to be, what afternoon it's going to be, as we have the Yellow Jackets of West Virginia State. And they're going to get ready to take on Fairmont State and what's going to be an exciting day of football here as we have, of course, the Fighting Falcons of Fairmont State. And they come in here with a 6-2 and two record, having defeated the top team in the MEC Conference last week in Charleston. And no doubt about it, we're going to have a game, I think, that's going to be very exciting. And the two teams that they – they match up so well with each other with what they bring. And I think that, that there's going to be some uh, – I think it's, it's going to come down to creativity today. And I think who can emphasize their who, – who will best emphasize their, their brand of football. And what an afternoon we're going to have for you here. I'm, I'm Tyler Rowland. And um, a big shout-out with me, we have Anthony Sprouse on camera. And we have Garrett Lester on production with me. And I wanted to say – First off, thank you for tuning in, and and we're going to talk a little bit more about this game. We're just under seven minutes before the before we we kick off, and we're going to take a break here and come back. You're watching Yellow Jacket Football on the MEC Network, brought to you by Video Productions. Health coverage for your family, your employees, and your company is one of the most important decisions you can make. The health plan proudly supports our active and healthy communities and has been your most trusted carrier for over 40 years. We are here for your family. We are here for your business. We'll be here for you when you need us most because your health coverage is our priority. The health plan here for you. What are you working for? Do you want to pursue your athletic potential while earning a degree that will benefit you for a lifetime? Do you want to play at the highest level in your sport? Do you want to be a champion? That's what the proud members of the Mountain East Conference are advancing toward every day. Providing opportunities and pursuing excellence. The Mountain East Conference. Hi, I'm Keith Powell with Yes Chevy and Yes Ford. And right now at our Let's Trade Keys event, give me the keys to your old ride and pick out the keys to any car on my lot. And your payments will stay the same until 2024. But hurry, I can only help the first 77 people only at Yes Chevy in Hurricane and Yes Ford in Huntington, where every car comes with a lifetime warranty. Our mission as educators is to help you grow, explore, and achieve your aspirations. When our seniors graduate, they receive more than just a diploma. They leave Wheeling University with clarity, purpose, and the confidence that they need to succeed throughout their career. Exceptional experiences, exciting opportunities, meaningful guidance, and lifelong friendships. This is the foundation in academic excellence we believe in. That's the Wheeling University difference. Tomorrow's innovators, teachers, caregivers, researchers, leaders, and creators all have one thing in common. They started out just like you. At West Liberty University, you are the focus. This is a place where you will gain the skills, knowledge, and confidence to change your life and the world around you. It all starts here, with you. Visit westliberty.edu to start your journey. It's all here at West Liberty University.
And we're back. You're watching Yellow Jacket Football on the MEC Network, brought to you by Video Productions. I'm Tyler Rowland, and we look forward to having you today for this matchup between the West Virginia State Yellow Jackets and Fairmont State, the Fighting Falcons. And the two teams are getting ready to meet out at midfield for the coin toss. As we have for West Virginia State, that's number 10, Donovan Riddick, number 9, Corlin Witcher, that's number 50, Andre Sagastumi, and number 2, Christian Thompson. And I'm trying to get a better angle on Fairmont State from where I'm seated as they are the two teams are, we'll see first off what way out there, but that looks like number eight, Randy Robinson, and number one, Brockton Blair, from what I'm seeing for Fairmont State. Officials going through, and the toss is up. And it looks like State won the toss. And it looks like, so it looks like West Virginia State will defer the second half and Fairmont State will open up receiving and this has been this has been interesting in the sense that Fairmont State when you look at them from a statistical perspective they haven't been all that great offensive I mean they're they're ranked ninth in the league in both total yards per game on offense at 339 per game and also in yards allowed defensively at 399 per game but they're finding a way to get it done in the sense that they've been very efficient on the offensive end and on the defensive side. One thing that they've done very well is they have, have forced a lot of turnovers, and Bushra in particular leading the way. You will hear his name a lot, the D2Football.com Football Player of the Week, as he, he has, has snagged six interceptions this year and has garnered a lot of national attention. As now we're going to get ready to kick this one away here from Lake and Ray F Field at Dickerson Stadium. And no, no doubt about it, we're going to see some excitement from these two teams. And of course, West Virginia State looking to snap a two-game losing streak. And Fairmont State coming off of a huge win at Charleston. And, of course, looking to beat West Virginia State for the first time since 2018 as Fairmont State. As now Brennan Schmidt, the 175-pound junior from Fayetteville, Georgia, will line up to kick off. And here we go. That one is kicked back, and Fairmont State will return. And that's, he's got it, a pretty good return there, and that's going to be taken out to about the 30-yard line. So, so some... Pretty good starting field position for West Virginia State here, opening this one up. And we will see how here how how State, State comes out. And that was Hagler on the return, by the way, as, as State will come out and at quarterback. And, of course, you'll see at, at quarterback, you'll see Floria. And he has been, although, I mean, statistically you might not say he's been up there. One thing he has done is he's been very, very efficient with how he's 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 uh, he's carried himself this year. And here we go. It's handed off up the middle, and it's going to be carried for a gain of two. So that'll make it second and eight for West Virginia State or for Fairmont State right here in the first quarter. And that was Hatcher with the first. First carry for Fairmont State, and Witcher making the tackle. And second and eight, and eight, split wide outs, and that's going to be Hatcher in the backfield again as he's going to go in motion to the other side, and it's going to be a pass as they're looking. He has time, and Floria is going to take off and get close to the first down. I think he got it, but 
Came real close. That's going to be, yes, he did get it. That's going to be a gain of about eight. And he will tuck it and run occasionally. You'll see him sometimes carry the ball. He's had over 400 career rushing yards. So you'll see him, you will see him take it quite a bit. And um, as they, they like to spread the difference between the two teams with West Virginia State. They like to – you'll see primarily Riddick and Felder carry the ball as it's going to be handed off again this time. Hatcher with a train of steam right side. Hurls the defender, gets the first down, still on his feet, and he's going to get close to 20 on the play. Big gain from Hatcher, and that was a, a huge hole on the right side of the offensive line that opened up. And that, so now that's going to put Fairmont State in the territory of West Virginia State here on this opening drive. And they're going to go pistol formation with a fresh set of downs. That, that last game was for 18 as, again, same play, and that's going to go for about five or six. So that'll, you know, that'll be not far from the first down. And do we have a flag down? We'll see what the penalty is here. And that's going to be holding against the Falcons. So fighting Falcons will be, we'll see where the spot was. It looks like that's going to make it, they're going to move them back 10 yards. They'll make it first and 15 it looks like for them. So that run will be negated. So here we, here we go. They're going trips this time. As the ball snapped, it's handed off. No, it's going to be Floria carrying up the middle. And he has, he's going to get close to 10 on the play. And that, that's what it's all, all about, finding a way to – to get that to carry out that fake and that's going to be his second carry and he has close to 20 on the ground now tonight it has been run plays so far for Fairmont State that has been able to get the job done as it is second and about six and hand it off again Hatcher right side same play and he's going to get he's going to come up about a yard or two short of the first down but still better position than earlier when they had it first and 15. Again, this Fairmont State offense, they average right around 170 yards per game on the ground and spread it out among a few players uh, running the ball. They, un Unlike State, they don't primarily rely on Felder and Riddick. They'll have some different guys that shoulder the load for them. Here, third and two pistol line up. And West Virginia State shows blitz. It's handed off left side. Hatcher, and he's going to get brought down. That's going to be close. I don't think he got it. He was able to avoid the blitzer from the left side, but still not able to get there as it looked like Jones possibly got there and Thompson got there on the tackle. So fourth and one coming up here for Fairmont State. And... This is a team that has converted 36% on from fourth down on the season. That's going to be fourth and actually a long one. It's handed off Hatcher again. He'll slide through to the defender and get it. Had him in the backfield, but just couldn't quite bring him down. Hatcher able to slide down there and on his sixth carry gets the first down for Fairmont State. As they're continuing to move the ball and have good clock control here early as they've started out four downs, and we have a player player down for Fairmont State. So we're going to take a timeout and come back. You're watching Yellow Jacket Football on the MEC Network, brought to you by Video Productions. Life, things aren't scripted. If you're an athlete, we need people like you and translate those skills to officiate. You can get a lot out of it. It happens in every town, in every game. We never have a perfect game, but the rewards always outweigh the negativities.
And we're back. Here is injured, but could not quite see who that was. I apologize from the angle. But the good news is that he did get off okay. As now that's going to be first and ten for Fairmont State. It's been all run plays so far for them. And it's going to be a pass this time. And it's caught. And plenty of room. He's going to go first down and then some. And a nice gain on that play. They carried out the fake and able to able to take it and 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 get a good get a good gain on that as that was Giacomo on the reception. That's his first for the first first completion for Floria. As now they are in the red zone here and it's handed off up the middle, but the West Virginia State line right there to get him. Well, that that was a uh, looked looked like Witcher was in on that play. That's going to make it second down. That was Washington on his first carry. You'll see Washington. You'll see him carry it quite a bit as well. In particular, the trio of Hatcher, Farrow, and Crosby for Fairmont State will will you'll see us carry it some as now it's. Going to be handed off right side again. That hole open right there, and he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Fairmont State. So the first drive of the game is the result of a 70-yard touchdown drive in which the in which Crosby gets the score on that and on a 10-yard run. But that right side, they have found it looks like the offensive coaches for Fairmont State have found a a seam in that defense that they like to attack as that run play has worked quite well as they, they have 60, 60 yards on of rushing on that as now they're coming in to kick, and that is Emmanuel Richardson, number 93, and he splits the upright. So with 9.43 remaining in the first quarter, Fairmont State draws first blood as they lead West Virginia State 7-0. We'll be right back here on the MEC Network. Health coverage for your family, your employees, and your company is one of the most important decisions you can make. The health plan proudly supports our active and healthy communities and has been your most trusted carrier for over 40 years. We are here for your business. We'll be here for you when you need us most because your health coverage is our priority the health plan here for you hi i'm keith powell with yes chevy and yes ford and right now at our let's trade keys event give me the keys to your old ride and pick out the keys to any car on my lot and your payments will stay the same until 2024 but hurry, I can only help the first 77 people only at Yes Chevy in Hurricane and Yes Ford in Huntington, where every car comes with a lifetime warranty. And we're back as, as now Richardson back in to kick off. That was his 35th. Uh, 35th PAT that he's hit this year. He's hit all 35 of his attempts as now he's getting ready to kick off. And we'll see what West Virginia State, what they put together here as that's looks like Javion Monroe that's back to return. Here as they were able to, to gather 60 rushing yards on that last drive and route to their first touchdown of the night as this one's kicked back and here we go and this one's taken left side he has room 25 30 35 and that'll be result in a, a nice starting position for West Virginia State of course led by Joel Felder that offense one of the best running backs in the country as he could potentially eclipse a thousand yards on the season tonight given the type of game that he has as now State taking the field, and that is number 10, Donovan Riddick, the quarterback who just recently completed his 50th career touchdown pass at West Virginia State. And here we go. It's handed off up the middle. That's going to be no. Riddick's going to take it. He has plenty of room, and he's going to get five or six. 
So Riddick on the fake, and he's going to get his get six yards. That'll make it second and four. Quick handoff up the middle. Felder looks, and he's met at the line of scrimmage. So that's so a, a, so a good run up the – or a good job by the defensive line of Fairmont, Fairmont State as now it's going to be a gain of about two. as it's going to be third and two, and State with the football. And here we go. It's handed off on the jet sweep left side, and he's carrying it and not going to get there for the first down. That's Tayshawn Butler on the carry. So that's going to make it fourth and about. Looks like no gain on that, so fourth and two. So they're going to bring out the punting unit. Schmidt will come out. Here, so not a good start for State. Or the offense has struggled a little bit in recent weeks. Of course, Riddick, who started the year on fire, almost leading the country in completion percentage. Off a bit, but and it's going to be a punt. That one will go way back. And take a state bounce. And they're going to stop it at the one. So now Fair, that's where Fairmont State will take over. After a good drive last time where they where they, they amounted 60 yards in rushing en route to a 10-yard touchdown run by Crosby. Derek Crosby, who of course has, I mean, they, they have some guys, I mean, looking at their numbers, the, the running game, that's been their strength. This year, you look at Hatcher coming in at 439 yards, Farrow at 378, Derek Crosby 248, all three averaging above five a carry, and then Floria at 186 on the ground. So now this is going to make a fresh set of downs for Fairmont State. Of course, they'll be starting way back in their their own territory here. It'll be a See what they do. They're going to come out. Power formation looks like they're just going to sneak it to F Floria. That's exactly what they're going to do. And the big guy's going to plow his way for about nine. So Floria on his third carry now up to 25, about 25 yards rushing. And that's going to get them, you know, get them out of some serious – yardage trouble is that now they're going to have a lot more breathing room to work with from about the 11 yard line as it looks like we have a timeout on the field taken so we will take it as well you're watching the yellow jacket football on the MEC network brought to you by video productions unlocking your potential and discovering your purpose it's about community and how we can better serve others. It's about learning and doing. It's about the journey and the road getting there. It's about opportunities and the endless possibilities. It's about finding where you belong, and it is here at Concord University. It's about you, and it starts with you. At Glimple State University, you can discover friends to last a lifetime. And we're back, and it's handed off right side. That same play that Fairmont State has been running again, plowing forward for a first down. That's number four, Washington, on his second carry, Donovan Washington. So another Fairmont State first down as, as now they're averaging right around seven yards per play. So, so that now they'll be close to the 20 with a fresh set of downs. And man in motion. That's Giacomo, the tight end. And here we go. It's handed off again. Washington up the middle, and he's going to gain three, maybe four. 
That's going to make it second at about six for Fairmont State. And, and, and time of possession right now, they, they have held the ball for seven of the nine minutes in this game so far and just doing a good job eating away at that clock here early. As they're going to stay with it, and that's going to be handed off. Hatcher again, right side. This time they're able to get him at the line. It might have been... Is that Lewis again? I could, I'm trying to see from the angle. Um, that was Amari Lewis. That was Amari Lewis again. So that's going to be third, third down now for third and six for Fairmont State. As they are 0 for 1 on third down so far tonight. And it's snapped. Blitz coming from the right side. Floria rolls out, throws it, and nearly picked off. Oh, Jai Martin almost had that one, but that's going to make it fourth down. Floria has thrown, thrown only three interceptions on the year, but has completed just under 50% of his passes, and now that's going to put him in a punting situation as Scout Arthur comes into the game to punt. And here we go. It's a booming kick. And that's going to go right into the hands of Fairmont State. And here we go. That's Jawan Bunch. And he looks for room, gets a little bit, and gets out of bounds close to the 50. So good position here for the Yellow Jackets as they went three and out on their last drive. And here we go. First and ten now. They'll have it at the 45. As that's Riddick and Felder in the backfield, they're going trips. And it's faked. And Riddick's going to roll out, looking under pressure. He's going to run it. He cuts up. Riddick to the 50, 45, 40. First down for West Virginia State. That's what's so dangerous about having a quarterback like Riddick. Just such a big body to have to account for. And he's able to gain... 20 or 15 yards on that play and get a first down as it's handed off. Fella is going to carry it and he's going to get maybe one. That was Blair on the tackle, Brockton Blair. So now second and 10 for the Yellow Jackets. That's it. And then looks like Butler at the slot back position. And it's snapped. Reddick's going to throw. Out route is complete. So Reddick completes the pass. And it looked like that was Monroe on the reception. It's Monroe. I can't see where the jersey's folded up. That was Monroe or Johnson that caught that one. So now they're going right back to the line, third and four. West Virginia State 0 of 1 on third down so far today. They fake it to Butler. Riddick drops back over the ca and caught by Butch. Jawad Butch with the first down reception, and that's going to put West Virginia State in the red zone for the first time today. The second first down on this drive as they're – Looking to push tempo. They're right back on the line. That's Riddick and Felder in the backfield. And Riddick looks like wanting to make an adjustment at the line. That's Butler and Monroe at the bottom of your screen at wide out. Riddick's under pressure. He's going to throw it out. So, so far, Fairmont State doing a good job applying pressure early on, although Riddick was able to escape at once for a big gain running the ball. As so far, and that was Nemo Roberts who was able to apply the pressure on that play. Uh, went right back to the line, second and ten. They need to get past the Fairmont State ten. It's pitched to Felder. He has room, 20, 15, 10. Felder close to the five-yard line. He gets out of bounds, getting the first down.
So Joel Felder, a nice gain as that's his third carry on the night, 13 yards. And now it's going to be first and goal for West Virginia State as Big Nate Baker comes into the game in the backfield. The tight end is now, it's handed off Felder left side and he's, that's going to get bottled up after a gain of maybe one or two. That was Igwe that got the tackle, number 91, and watch for him. This That guy had, brings, I mean, he brings the intensity defensively for Fairmont State. He does a really good job up front plugging up the holes. As it's going to be second and goal again now. And watch Jawan Bunch in the slot as Felder goes in motion. And Reddick, it's a shuffle pass, and... Looks like the Butler, but they were they were all over that, and that's going to make it now third and goal from about the seven. Looks like that might have been a loss on that play. There'll be a loss of one, so third and goal from the five. As this is the first time in the red zone today for West Virginia State. And that snapped. Riddick drops back. He's going to throw it to Bunch, and it's incomplete. So Fairmont State able to hold, and now the field goal unit coming in for West Virginia State here early. As they had a had a good, I mean, had a good drive. Just gotten just a, just a couple plays up the middle that got got stopped by Fairmont State, and now. Schmidt into kick. It's up, and it is good. So the Yellow Jackets are on the board here in the first quarter. It's Fairmont State leading 7-3. We're going to take a break. You're watching Yellow Jacket football on the MEC Network, brought to you by Video Productions. It's a small word, but at Fairmont State University, you are the focus of everything we do. Over 80 fields of study, hands-on classroom experiences, teacher mentors who challenge. At West Virginia Wesleyan College, you'll unearth new passions, be exposed to fresh perspectives, and find what drives you. This place of discovery is where you can become a scientist, a leader, an athlete, a performer, a friend. Opportunities include research, internships, and study abroad. Plus, our vibrant community makes for experiences you'll never forget. Discover yourself at West Virginia Wesleyan College. And we're back as a 10-play 48-yard drive by State is capped with a field goal, and it's bobbled. And now Fairmont State looking to take it back and under some pressure. Oh, my, he's got nearly squirted out of there. <laughs> but that was number 38, Jawan Bradshaw, the freshman from Miami, Florida, that came up to make the tackle. And now that, that looked like for a second it was going to be a – Tough situation for Fairmont State, but they're able to turn it around and get themselves a decent starting position. Looks like that's going to be right at about the 26-yard line. Oh, here we go. And so far, the running game has been the – and that was, that was Jameer Hunter that had the return, but looks like it's going to be Hatcher in the backfield with Floria as they're going – Twins wide outs here on this first down, and it's going to be a pass. Floria looking, looking, under some pressure, gets it out, and it's incomplete. Batted away by Jai Martin. And, you know, he got that. Got some – that was some good pressure applied by that yellow jacket defensive line that that was able to, to get in there. That's number 92, Amari Lewis, the junior, the big 6'2", 320-pound junior that got in there to make the play. Anyway, Lewis from Parkfield, Maryland, originally played at as, – as that's going to be taken up, and that's going to be a gain of about nine. That was Washington, so a third down play in the works now for Fairmont State. As number 19, Giacomo checks back in. He's one to watch. He had their reception earlier. 
And you'll see him occasionally at the slot back position like he is now as a blocker as it snapped, handed off him. Washington plows through, continuing to get yardage and gets a trail of steam by Washington, who's, who's carried the ball quite a bit tonight. He had, as that's going to be his sixth carry, and he's up to 26 yards. So as a whole right now, 95 yards on the ground for Fairmont State, and they're, they, are, they are doing a good job using their discipline, driving forward and getting that extra yardage as that is going to conclude the first quarter. So here at Dickerson Stadium, it's Fairmont State 7, West Virginia State 3. We're going to take a break and come back. You're watching Yellow Jacket Football on the MEC Network, brought to you by Video Productions. What are you working for? Do you want to pursue your athletic potential while earning a degree that will benefit you for a lifetime? Do you want to play at the highest level in your sport? Do you want to be a champion? That's what the proud members of the Mountain East Conference are advancing toward every day. Providing opportunities and pursuing excellence. The Mountain East Conference. And we're, we're back. It's 7-3, to three, Fairmont State in the lead here getting ready to start the second quarter as they have run the ball efficiently. As that is going to be in another good run for a gain of five. And that was Crosby who carried it. Lewis on the stop. A gain of five. I think that's going to be the key for West Virginia State to not finding out a way to stop that efficient ground game for the Fighting Falcons. As, as they have run the ball tonight, they have, have run it 17 of their 20 plays as it's handed off Crosby again, left side. He has a big hole and gets the first down. Crosby again. That will be a gain of close to 10. So and just looking how evenly spread the numbers are Right now, as we have a, a, a state player down, we're going to take a break and come back. You're watching the MEC Network. Unlocking your potential and discovering your purpose. It's about community and how we can better serve others. It's about learning and doing. It's about the journey and the road getting there. It's about opportunities and the endless possibilities. It's about finding where you belong, and it is here at Concord University. It's about you, and it starts with you. At Glenville State University, you can discover friends to last a lifetime, professors who broaden your perspective, and the skills and education for future success in a small town environment. At Glenville State University, you can become a pioneer. Fairmont State, that was Amari Lewis, but he powered off on his own will and should be back in the game. As now, but Fairmont State, they're rushing to, uh, tonight. Hatcher with 33, Washington and Floria each with 26 yards, Crosby with 24. Talk about spreading it around early as now this first down, it's going to be handed off up the middle. That's first carry, a gain of five. Another powerful gain up the middle for the Fighting Falcons. 
As that's going to make it second and five. And this one, so again, that, again, just keeping it between the tackles. That was Tidwell on his first carry. A gain of actually four. So second and six. Now as it's handed off, and it's going to be Tidwell again. Left side cuts it up, and he's going to gain about three. So third down, and I'm anticipating we'll see there in two down territory here in the right at the maroon zone at the 30, about the 37 yard line. And it snapped, handed off, carried up the middle, first down, and then a couple. And that's again number four, Washington, on the carry, and the chains move once again. So now over 120 on the ground for Fairmont State. And a fresh set of downs here as, as they, they are approaching the Yellow Jacket red zone. So first and ten coming up as they're in pistol formation. And it's handed off right side. And that's Crosby carrying it. And he's going to get a couple, three. So now it'll be second and seven for as, as again, the Fairmont State rushing attack is continuing to continue to, to work well for them. As they run at 22 of their 25 plays so far, Floria hands it off Washington, and he's going to get a couple. That's going to make it third and about five now for Fairmont State. So here we go. That will they will need to get past the 22-yard line. Fairmont State will to get the first down. So right now in Fairmont State, they are two of four on third down conversions so far tonight. As that is Washington in the backfield with Floria. And it's snapped. It's a pass. Floria, no, it's quarterback draw. He's going up the middle. That's going to be close. I think he's got it by about a yard, though. And Floria carries it again, and and he, he is up to above 30 yards rushing now on the night. And again, the chains will move as they get to the 21-yard line of the Yellow Jackets. And so first down now for Fairmont State again here. Man in motion. And it's going to be handed off. That's Tibwell. He's going to cut it up. Tibwell gets about eight. So just no answer so far for that Fairmont State running game. Again, the Fairmont State right now with time of possession they hold the advantage there almost three minutes to one right now as or we have a whistle well, an official timeout on the field. So looks like a penalty actually that okay. Okay. State, okay. So state players can get up. We're going to take a break and come back. You're watching the MEC network. What are you working for? Do you want to pursue your athletic potential while earning a degree that will benefit you for a lifetime? Do you want to play at the highest level in your sport? Do you want to be a champion? That's what the proud members of the Mountain East Conference are advancing toward every day. Providing opportunities and pursuing excellence. The Mountain East Conference.
And we're back. So so now getting ready. Looks like some confusion on the field. There's been a penalty. I'm not sure. Looks like it was unsportsmanlike conduct that went against the uh, that, that went against um, Fairmont State. So that is going to move the ball back. And that's going to move it way back. Looks like two penalties. So that's going to move it all the way back to the 44-yard line. Okay, now I have a description. So now it's it's a holding penalty and then the unsportsmanlike apologies. So that's going to make it first and 33 for Fairmont State. Here, we'll see what they dial up. Man in motion. They need to get to the to the 11 to get the first down. It's a screen, and it's caught. Tibwell finds room. Tibwell stays on his feet, cuts back, and he's going to make it uh, still on his feet. Tibwell might have gotten the first down. That was close. Unbelievable. A gain of 32 on the play by Elijah Tidwell. And now that's going to make it second, actually second and two. It's going to be short. But unbelievable running on that end. And, of course, West Virginia is struggling a little bit on the discipline end tonight of things as that's going to make it second and way more manageable. Tibwell again up the middle. And that's going to be, I think he's got it by about a yard. And that is Tibwell's fourth carry tonight. And Tidwell has not, that was his first reception of the season. And it could not come in a bigger situation. So now a fresh set of downs for the Fighting Falcons as they have it on the goal line. And again, defeated the, the number one team in the conference, Charleston, last week and looking to defeat West Virginia State for the first time since 2018. Man in motion. And it's handed off, but right in the backfield, West Virginia State getting back there to make the play. That was Crosby, but we have a flag down. We'll see what the well, – so that looked like that was Nick Blake. Is Blake or Avery Scott that got back there to make the tackle. We'll see what the as it looks like state it looks like state was off sides. So that's going to make it first and five. Now that that's a first penalty against West Virginia State tonight. The Falcons have three for thirty five at this point, so that's going to make it first and goal from the five. Another flag down. And that's going to be a false start against Fairmont State. So that'll make it first and goal now from the 10. Essentially wiping off the, the last play. Oh, here we go. They've had it once in the red zone today, has Fairmont State, and, and of course converted on that earlier as they 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 have been they've they are 19 or, or 20 of 31 on the season. I mean coming into tonight they were 63 percent in the red zone in terms of getting touchdowns and a fade route thrown and caught or broken up. Blake back there at the last second to break that one up. But that was meant to be that pass was meant to be for Winston Page, but Nick Blake back there to break it up. And Page a target they like to go to down there. He's had six two hundred and sixty two yards out on the year receiving, averaging right around thirteen a catch. That's power formation coming up. And they're going to take it. Floria, he's gonna pull his way into the end zone and get the touchdown. So now Fairmont State taking a two-score lead here midway through the second quarter. So the big guy just plowed his way in there for the touchdown, and Floria having a heck of a night running the ball. 
That, that is 36 yards now on five carries. 142 on the ground so far for Fairmont State. As now they're coming in to kick, that's going to be Richardson. It's up and good. So Fairmont State taking a double-digit lead here in the second quarter, and we're going to be right back. You're watching Yellow Jacket Football on the MEC Network, brought to you by Video Productions. Life, things aren't scripted. If you're an athlete, we need people like you and translate those skills to officiate. You can get a lot out of it. It happens in every town, in every game. We never have a perfect game, but the rewards always outweigh the negativities. It's kicked off, and that's going to be a touchback. So Richardson on the kick, and I believe that is his 15th touchback of the season. And it is. So now, so now West Virginia State will start with the football. So far, the story tonight has been the running game. I mean, you have four guys for West for, for Fairmont State that have had a that have had more than 25 yards of their. 142 total, and of course, Tidwell stepping it up big tonight. Elijah Tidwell, a big reception that that mitigated a first and, th and 33 situation for them as it's handed off up the middle. And that's, that's Felder that carries it. That'll be a gain of about th two, maybe three. But right now, the time of possession, 16.39. Has for Fairmont State, 536 for the Yellow Jackets. So, I mean, they have established their tempo early as now Riddick fakes it. He's going to throw it across, and it's caught. And that's going to be a gain of about five or six. And that that pass was com complete, so that'll be, looks like that was Robbins that caught that one, so that'll make it a gain of about six. Gilbert Roberts get, Robbins gets his first reception of the game. And it'll be third and two so far. West Virginia State only one of three on third down conversions tonight, including a third and two situation. Bunch in motion, handed off Felder up the middle, and he's going to take it for the first down. Seems like they've liked to use that motion in short yardage situations as that'll be first and ten for for the Yellow Jackets. And here we go. First down. And it snapped and handed off up the middle. Plenty of room coming up. First down and a big hole opening up for West Virginia State. As that's number 27, Basoa, the sophomore with the carry. And that'll be a, a first down. A gain of 30 on the play. Just able to... Pessoa with a, a great carry up the middle. I think he was shocked even just how big that hole was. And he's going to get a first down for the Yellow Jackets as they are now into Fairmont State territory again. And it snaps. Screen pass to Bunch. It's caught. Bunch looking for room. Is going to cut and get maybe a yard. So that'll make it second at about nine coming up here. That's the second reception for Jawan Bunch. Gavin Smith on the tackle. Uh, 
Well, actually, second and ten now as Baker's in the backfield with the full back position. And it's going to be handed off. No, Riddick carries it left side. Good block from Baker. Riddick cuts back and stays on his feet. Still staying up, and the big guy's going to plow his way for a first down. Number 10, Donovan Riddick with the carry. And that's going to up. But do we have a flag, flag down? Do officials are discussing. We'll see what this is going to, to be. Right now, the play was a 15-yard run by Riddick. Riddick, who's run the ball and had five touchdowns on the season. But we will see what the officials determine on this play. It looks like a pretty lengthy discussion going on. We'll see what they officially come up with. But some good running on this drive. Pessoa with his first carry just burst through there and got a 30-yard gain to, to help out State and put, put them in this position right now. So I'm, I don't see any kind of – need some confusion down there. That's going to be second and two, so it'll be a gain. The end result will be a gain of eight. So so Rick now is going to hand it off to Pessoa up the middle, and the big guy's going to get a first down. That'll be a gain of about six on the play. So a 5'11", 180-pound sophomore from Dayton, New Jersey. And it's going to be, and Rick rolls out, and the pass is thrown and caught by Robbins, and that'll be a gain of about four. A flag down, I think they're going to call a, some motion. Let's see what this, well, is. no, that's going to be holding against the Yellow Jackets. So that will probably make it first in about 20 now. So now Robbins goes out and Moore comes back in. Johnson at the bottom of your screen at wide out. And now Jones is at the slot back position. And Reddick's going to pass, fakes the pitch. He's going to go downfield and incomplete. Pass was intended for number 12, Nolan Johnson. They like to throw those short routes to him. They were playing him tight and tried to get one deep, but good coverage on that play. As that will, so, so that will make it um, second and 20 now. As the Jackets right back on the line. And it's snapped. And it's going to be screen pass caught. And a trade of steam. First, close to the first down. That's number 28, Tayshawn Butler on the reception. And that'll be his first reception of the night. As it'll be the fifth Yellow Jacket to catch the football. And that will make it third, and what was a second and 20 is now a third and short. As you can see, the heavy blocking coming in now, and Baker comes back into the game for the Yellow Jackets. Him and as does number 85, Landon Dotson, the sophomore from Phelps, Kentucky. As now it's handed off, and Pessoa up the middle. Pessoa is still on his feet, and he's going to get drugged down, but not before he gets the first down. That was Busher on the tackle. Of course, one of the, the Busher, the t conference interception leader, and I mentioned the D2 football player of the week nationally as 
Now it's a first down, and it's handed off. Pessoa carries it, and he gets close, but not quite, as that's going to set him up, though, a second and goal from the one-yard line. So now they're going power formation here. As you can see in the backfield, that's number 89, Terry and Barber from Columbus, Ohio, who played at Bishop Hartley. They put the big man into the backfield, and it's handed off counter play, and it's close. I don't think he quite got in there. He was close, but not quite in, so that's going to set it up third and, and goal on the inch line, practically. And so far, six plays and 55 yards on this drive for the Yellow Jackets. And that's going to be, they're going wildcat. That's Felder back there. And he's going to take it, spins, turns, plows, and he's in. Touchdown, Yellow Jackets. A great carry by Felder as he's able to get into the end zone. And now I'm going to try to get get him on the board. That is his 10th touchdown of the season. So, so we, now it's 14-9 here in the second quarter. It was Felder, that was his, his seventh rushing attempt of the night. So far, as we have a player down, we're going to take a break and come back. You're watching the Yellow Jacket football on the MEC Network, brought to you by Video Productions. Health coverage for your family, your employees, and your company is one of the most important decisions you can make. The health plan proudly supports our active and healthy communities and has been your most trusted carrier for over 40 years. We are here for your family. We are here for your business. We'll be here for you when you need us most because your health coverage is our priority. The Health Plan, here for you. Hi, I'm Keith Powell with Yes Chevy and Yes Ford. And right now at our Let's Trade Keys event, give me the keys to your old ride and pick out the keys to any car on my lot. And your payments will stay the same until 2024. But hurry, I can only help the first 77 people only at Yes Chevy in Hurricane and Yes Ford in Huntington, where every car comes with a lifetime warranty. And Schmidt with the extra point. It's up and good. Injured player is Logan Bartholomew, number 69. He's able to walk on his own, but getting helped out a little bit on the sideline. And we'll keep watch over him and keep updated of his status. So... The score right now, Fairmont State, and we wish him a speedy recovery, no doubt, as Fairmont State leads 14-10 to after the West Virginia State touchdown. We'll be right back. You're watching the MEC Network. What are you working for? Do you want to pursue your athletic potential while earning a degree that will benefit you for a lifetime? Do you want to play at the highest level in your sport? Do you want to be a champion? That's what the proud members of the Mountain East Conference are advancing toward every day. Providing opportunities and pursuing excellence. The Mountain East Conference. Felder scores on a one-yard touchdown plunge. And Schmidt kicks it off, and here we go. As they're returning, and good hole on the left side. That's going to be taken and brought down. And that looked like number 30, Tim Samford, on the tackle. 
for the Yellow Jackets. So now that'll set up first and 10. Fairmont State with touchdowns on two of their first three drives, and a big part of that has been their running game as they've had over the ball for over 16 minutes on the offense. A big part of that and over 140 yards on the ground as well. Florian, I forgot to mention, congratulations to him on picking up his 10th career rushing touchdown earlier tonight as it's handed off, and they're going to Crosby on the left side, and he's met before he can get back to the line. And one of the few times the state defense has been able to be effective against the run tonight, they get him in before he can get back to the line. Looks like that black backside blitz was able to – to help make a difference on that one. So that's going to make it second and close to 11 now for the Fighting Falcons as that's Crosby in the backfield with Floria. And it snapped. Floria, he drops back, looking, looking under pressure. He's going to carry it, but he doesn't get anywhere. Maybe a yard. And it looked like that was Thompson in on the tackle. Christian Thompson, the 5'11 senior. And that's going to make it third down at about eight. But a timeout taken by West Virginia State. We're going to take it with them. We'll be right back. You're watching MEC, you're watching Yellow Jacket football on the MEC Network, brought to you by Video Productions. What are you working for? Do you want to pursue your athletic potential while earning a degree that will benefit you for a lifetime? Do you want to play at the highest level in your sport? Do you want to be a champion? That's what the proud members of the Mountain East Conference are advancing toward every day. Providing opportunities and pursuing excellence. The Mountain East Conference. And we're back. Third down situation coming up for the Fighting Falcons. And as it looks like State showing blitz, and they're going to hand it off and not going to get the first down. That'll be Crosby carrying it for about four. But again, after the success that Fairmont State has had on the ground tonight, I can't really blame him so much for trying that as now that's going to make it fourth and four as they're going to be bringing in Arthur and the punting unit. So one of the few times that the state defense has been able to succeed in stopping defensively as we're going to take a we're going to take a quick timeout and come or yeah, we'll come back here momentarily. You're watching the MEC network. Dreams. You have dreams. You have dreams. A better life, a better job, a better you. So where do you start to build the skills necessary to get there? For more than 125 years, West Virginia... Oh, and we're back, and a booming punt downfield. And it's going to go and go out about bounds about the 21-yard line. So West Virginia State, that's where they will take over. Here as we are late in the second quarter, 29 seconds remaining. And we'll see what the Yellow Jackets try to dial up here. And that'll be first down. That's going to be Riddick and Felder in the backfield. And that wide out at the top of your screen will be Moore. And Bunch at the bottom of your screen will will be be mostly and looks like Johnson. Oh, here we go, first and ten. And Reddick's going to throw it. A pass is thrown and complete. And that'll, that'll be, it keeps him in bounds. And that's completed to Jawan Bunch. And that'll be Bunch's third reception on the game. So that'll make it second and about seven 
here for coming up. As I don't know if they they may, I don't know if they're going to try to get another playoff here or not. They may just let the clock run out. And that's what we're going to do. So it's going to be halftime. And that's going to be for, West Virginia State will get the ball starting the second half. So at halftime, it's 14 to 10. The Fairmont State leading West Virginia State. We're going to take a break and come back. You're watching Wet Yellow Jacket Football on the MEC Network, brought to you by Video Productions. In NCAA Division II, student athletes leave a lasting impression on their communities. That's because Division II student athletes want to make a difference and truly be part of their surrounding communities. Through community engagement, thousands of student athletes from various backgrounds interact with community members who view them as role models. This interaction leaves a positive and perhaps even life-changing impression on all those involved. In Division II, we rise to the opportunity and make community engagement ours. Davis and Elkins College will shape your future through personalized curriculum and career-focused internships. d &E is known for the quality of nurses, business leaders, and teachers we prepare for the field. We're leading the way with pre-professional programs developing the next generation of physical therapists, veterinarians, doctors, and lawyers. Our location makes programs in resource management, and outdoor recreation and natural fit, and our roots run deep in theater and film and visual arts. With distinction and excellence, we provide an affordable education designed just for you. Being a champion takes more than talent, more than the perfect pass, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the spirit to always push harder, the ability to overcome any hurdle, and the fire to be the best. Welcome to Division Two, where the pursuit is yours to create. And the question isn't, can you do it? It's, will you? What's possible when you have the freedom to explore things that inspire you? To be a part of a community that supports and challenges you? Where can you go to find the space and time to reach your goals? Who can you become when you're able to make connections in a place where you belong? Find out what's possible at Frostburg State University. In NCAA Division II, community engagement is an initiative at all 25 national championships because student athletes want to give back while competing for a national title. Over the course of the year, Division II student athletes have an opportunity to leave a lasting impression in local communities throughout the country. Whether Division II student athletes are volunteering at hospitals, schools, after school care programs, foster homes, or retirement villages, they make a difference in the lives of others. In Division II, we rise to the opportunity and make community engagement ours. We have the best of both worlds, a beautiful campus and easy to access all the excitement of downtown Cleveland. Your overall experience at Notre Dame will be amazing. From classroom to residence hall to dining hall to athletic field to whatever else you choose to do, the opportunities for learning at Notre Dame never stop. Back, it's halftime as the West Virginia State Yellow Jackets trail the Fairmont State Fighting Falcons 14 to 10, but did get a good touchdown drive off before the half and will get possession to start the half. I'm Tyler Rowland, and with me, I have West Virginia State President Eric Cage. And Eric, it's good to good to be here with you. And uh, first off, gosh, what are your thoughts on the, the game and the atmosphere here tonight? Well, it, it is great to be here with you this afternoon. It is a wonderful day here at Lake and Ray Field on our beautiful campus at West Virginia State University. There is a ton of energy uh, in the, in the uh, stadium here today. Uh, we wonder, really, really would like to see uh, all of our fans here. And uh, I just feel really good. It's a great day for football. Mm -hmm. Yes, and, and let's talk a little bit about the the school, and, and not just from the athletic side, but um, athletics or ac academics. What are some things going on right now, some, some of the exciting news we're seeing out of the university? Clearly, uh, athletics continues to be uh, uh, our uh, shining star here at West Virginia State. Our uh, football program is, is four and three. Our uh, 
with his volleyball team is uh, first in the conference, but beyond uh, the field of competition uh, in the classroom, uh, we're adding uh, new academic programs. Our cybersecurity program is new at West Virginia State University, and that program continues to grow. We're investing in nursing because we know that's a high demand program at West Virginia State. We've just announced that we're going to bring online a school of agriculture, food, and natural resources at the university. Uh, and we're also working to bring online the university's first doctoral degree, a doctorate in educational leadership. So there is a ton of activity, energy, and excitement at West Virginia State University. Wow, that's very impressive. And and so far, um, I know you mentioned you were at the university since 21. Of course, I've been the, the president for just over a year. Um, first off, um, just, to, just to make it that far, to be a university president, when you get to you, – because you, I'm sure you get asked by students and by people who come across you, um, what is the advice that you give to people to, to, to succeed and, and make it as far as someone as yourself? Well, what I would say is that it's obviously hard work is always uh, an essential ingredient, ingredient to success. So hard work is number one. Uh, two, of course, is, uh, is faith and, and family. Those two elements are critically important to success. And of course, last but not least, is education. Mm -hmm. I deeply believe in the transformative power of education. And mm -hmm. that is what we do here at West Virginia State University. We literally transform the trajectory of students' lives through the power of education. We say fondly that it starts at state. So you mm -hmm. come to our university, our faculty, our staff, our students, our alumni will all support you and help you achieve your goal, your vision, your dream, whatever that may be. Mm -hmm. And let's talk a little bit about um, on the athletic end. Um, it looks like volleyball has been quite, quite powerful this year, oh, a top at, at team in the conference. You are absolutely right. Our wow. volleyball pe team has been killing it uh, mm -hmm. under the direction of our, our new coach. We've got some really, really strong players. Uh, as I said, it's uh, right now the team is number one uh, in the conference, and I'm looking forward to a really, really strong finish for, for our volleyball team. Mm -hmm. That's awesome, and and talking about for the for the fan base to get to know you a little bit better. Um, what would be something maybe a, a cool fact about yourself, or um, something maybe sure. not a lot of people know? Well, I've not, a lot of people may not know that I have an identical twin brother. So uh, you have to ask yourself: Are you really talking to me, or are you talking to my twin brother? <laughs> 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 you never know. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> that's awesome, and. Uh, well, cut. well, brother, we thank you for coming on, Eric, and and um, and, and be sure, um, be sure to stay tuned. And gosh, a lot of a lot of exciting things you mentioned the agriculture program, Absolutely. and gosh, cybersecurity. So definitely a lot of growth at this university. So absolutely, there is um, incredible man. growth. Thank you so much for having me. And as always, go state. Yes. <laughs> All right, we're going to take a break and come back. You're watching the Yellow Jacket football on the MEC Network. We'll be back here shortly. Health coverage for your family, your employees, and your company is one of the most important decisions you can make. The health plan proudly supports our active and healthy communities and has been your most trusted carrier for over 40 years. We are here for your family. We are here for your business. We'll be here for you when you need us most, because your health coverage is our priority. The Health Plan, here for you. In NCAA Division II, student athletes leave a lasting impression on their communities. That's because Division II student athletes want to make a difference and truly be part of their surrounding communities. Through community engagement, thousands of student athletes from various backgrounds interact with community members who view them as role models. This interaction leaves a positive and perhaps even life-changing impression on all those involved. In Division II, we rise to the opportunity and make community engagement ours. Hi. I'm Keith Powell with Yes Chevy and Yes Ford. And right now at our Let's Trade Keys event, give me the keys to your old ride and pick out the keys to any car on my lot. And your payments will stay the same until 2024. But hurry, I can only help the first 77 people only at Yes Chevy in Hurricane and Yes Ford in Huntington, where every car comes with a lifetime warranty. Being a champion takes more than skill. 
more than endless drills, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the heart to give it your all, the agility to thrive from any angle, and the relentless drive to be the best. Welcome to Division Two, where the pursuit is yours to create, and the question isn't, can you do it? It's will you. What are you working for? Do you want to pursue your athletic potential while earning a degree that will benefit you for a lifetime? Do you want to play at the highest level in your sport? Do you want to be a champion? That's what the proud members of the Mountain East Conference are advancing toward every day. Providing opportunities and pursuing excellence. The Mountain East Conference. In NCAA Division II, community engagement is an initiative at all 25 national championships because student-athletes want to give back while competing for a national title. Over the course of the year, Division II student-athletes have an opportunity to leave a lasting impression in local communities throughout the country. Whether Division II student-athletes are volunteering at hospitals, schools, after-school care programs, foster homes, or retirement villages, they make a difference in the lives of others. In Division II, we rise to the opportunity and make community engagement ours. And we're back. You're watching Yellow Jacket Football on the MEC Network, brought to you by Video Productions. And at halftime right now, Fairmont State leads the Yellow Jackets 14-10. to And looking at it so far, it, Fairmont State has done incredibly well coming into this one with their clock control offense. They've run the ball. I mean, they, they've, they've run the ball a lot tonight. And I mean a lot. They've only had four pass attempts and you compare that to 30 rushing. So, so 30 of their 34 plays have been on the ground. And, I mean, they have four guys tonight that have run the ball for 30 yards or more and have spread the ball out incredibly well. But if you're just tuning in, it started out, Fairmont State would have the football, and they would get a drive that was capped off by – Floria picking up the or or by probably pick up his tenth career rushing touchdown as um, as um, as he he ended up getting Fairmont State on the board for the first time and um, and then then it was um, or I'm sorry that was Crosby that got the first score and that was a ten yard run they utilized the zone play to the right side that had tremendous success early on and led to them getting 60 yards on their first drive. Then West Virginia State would get the ball, would go three and out, and bat, and then Fairmont State would end up punting back as well. That State would get a drive and a field goal to cut the lead to 7-3. to three. And then when Fairmont State got the ball back, they scored this time with Floria getting a five-yard touchdown run up the middle for his 10th career touchdown. And so that that made it 14-3 to after the Emmanuel Richardson PAT. And then when, when State got it back, they had a drive in which Felder scored out of the Wildcat on a one-yard run and was able to get a good stop on that next play or that next set. But um, after a, a one pass completion to Jawan Bunch, they had, they they maintained possession, just ran the clock out for the first half. So starting the second half, the Yellow Jackets will have possession of the football. We're throw we're down to seven minutes here at halftime. And again, want to send a thank you to University President Eric Cage for coming on at halftime, and um, and definitely a, a good atmosphere here at West Virginia State and. Of course, a lot of exciting things he mentioned, you know, about their cybersecurity program, their agriculture program, and just the overall growth of the university. So definitely some good things going on. We're going to take a break and come back here. And we, we will have another three-minute break coming up. You're watching the Yellow Jacket Football on the MEC Network, brought to you by Video Productions. Health coverage for your family, your employees, and your company is one of the most important decisions you can make. The health plan proudly supports our active and healthy communities and has been your most trusted carrier for over 40 years. 
We are here for your family. We are here for your business. We'll be here for you when you need us most because your health coverage is our priority. The Health Plan, here for you. In NCAA Division II, student athletes leave a lasting impression on their communities. That's because Division II student athletes want to make a difference and truly be part of their surrounding communities. Through community engagement, thousands of student athletes from various backgrounds interact with community members who view them as role models. This interaction leaves a positive and perhaps even life-changing impression on all those involved. In Division II, we rise to the opportunity and make community engagement ours. Hi. I'm Keith Powell with Yes Chevy and Yes Ford. And right now at our Let's Trade Keys event, give me the keys to your old ride and pick out the keys to any car on my lot. And your payments will stay the same until 2024. But hurry, I can only help the first 77 people only at Yes Chevy in Hurricane and Yes Ford in Huntington, where every car comes with a lifetime warranty. Being a champion takes more than skill, more than endless drills, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the heart to give it your all, the agility to thrive from any angle, and the relentless drive to be the best. Welcome to Division Two, where the pursuit is yours to create, and the question isn't, can you do it? It's will you. What are you working for? Do you want to pursue your athletic potential while earning a degree that will benefit you for a lifetime? Do you want to play at the highest level in your sport? Do you want to be a champion? That's what the proud members of the Mountain East Conference are advancing toward every day. Providing opportunities and pursuing excellence. The Mountain East Conference. In NCAA Division II, community engagement is an initiative at all 25 national championships because student-athletes want to give back while competing for a national title. Over the course of the year, Division II student-athletes have an opportunity to leave a lasting impression in local communities throughout the country. Whether Division II student-athletes are volunteering at hospitals, schools, after-school care programs, foster homes, or retirement villages, they make a difference in the lives of others. In Division II, we rise to the opportunity and make community engagement ours. And we're back about three minutes to go to the start of the second half. And, of course, some people to say hello to. First off, Tanner Davis, a big shout-out to him who's tuning in. And also a big, big shout-out, one of, of course, to Coach Williams, a defensive coordinator for West Virginia State. Had the opportunity to work with him at the semi-professional level some. To Fabian Payne, one of the all-time great players to come through West Virginia State. The House of Pain, we called him the running back, and uh, had the opportunity also at the semi-professional level. He was on a team we competed against, and they called him House of Pain for good reason. He was hard to bring down. But what a game it's been so far as it's 14-10 to 10 right now, Fairmont State in the lead. And I think the story has been Fairmont State's ability to move the ball and and provide good clock control. I think that they've done an excellent job establishing their brand of football and spreading the ball around to allow the, themselves the opportunity to, I mean, to keep that state offense off the field. I mean, that's been one of the better offenses in the country has West Virginia State. And you look at who they have, I mean, one of the explosive running backs in Felder. And, of course, you have Riddick and then a number of receivers who can – and take advantage of opportunities and, and cash in for points. So I think that this is something that will will be a interesting for this second half because you see they you see the two team styles. Um, I mean Fairmont State, the Falcons, they like to. I mean they don't rush going to the line. They don't rush. They go into the line. They just come up, do their thing. State will come up and I mean they look to get back on the line immediately after a play so it's a lot to a lot to keep keep going but I think I think right now if you're state I mean I think you definitely want to try to establish better 
a better de- defensive presence in the second half and try to find ways and try to try to force Fairmont State to have to throw some of those long balls. I mean, you have to remember that although Floria has been an efficient quarterback throughout his career in terms of avoiding interceptions and not making dumb throws. He also has a lower completion percentage at just under 50%. Tonight he's 2 of 4. So I would say that something to try to prevent, that something to try to force them to throw it a little bit more. I mean, 30 of their 34 plays in the first half were rushing plays. So I think that that's something that State will have to do a better job on West Virginia State this second half, capitalizing on the run. I think if I'm Fairmont State, I mean, I think I try to keep try to keep emphasizing, try to stick with that zone play to the right that worked for him some early on. And, um, and defensively, I mean, I find creative ways to maybe disguise a coverage or two and try to get that, that yellow jacket offense off the field. But Richardson is back onto the, onto the field now for – the for for the Falcons as they're getting ready to kick off to start the second half. That's Moore back to return for and Moore and Pessoa back there with him. Pessoa had a great first half. He had a couple good runs, including a big thirty yarder in the second quarter. As now, fifteen minutes up on the clock to start the third. And here we go. It's kicked off. Richardson, this one goes way back, and he gets his 16th touchback of the season. So now State will start with offensively with it. And here we go, State on the ball. That's Riddick in the backfield. First and ten coming up for the Yellow Jackets. Felder back there with them. And they're going to hand it off. Felder's going to carry it and gain one, maybe two. Robinson on the stop for, for the Fighting Falcons. These two teams ranked... The, the Falcons ranked third, and the Yellow Jackets ranked fourth in the MEC in this one. As it's second and eight right now, it's fake to Felder. He's going down to Bunch, and incomplete. Bunch looking to get his fourth reception, but just got over there in time to break that one up. Smith with the break up. So now, and Riddick right now, who's 7 of 10 on the night for 48 yards, as that's going to be third and eight here coming up for the Yellow Jackets as it's snapped. Riddick drops back. He's looking, looking. He's under pressure. He's going to roll out. Riddick, he throws it to Bunch, and that one's going to go incomplete. So West Virginia State starts out three and out for the starts three and out here in the third quarter. And we'll punt the football away. Schmidt back onto the field for the Yellow Jackets. So now, here we go. Schmidt on the punt. And heavy pressure coming. He gets it off. That one's going to go back. Take a state bounce. Go back 25. And we'll see where that's spotted about the 23-yard line. Yeah, 25, 24, 23-yard line. So that is where Fairmont State will take over. But we have flags down. And we'll see what this one is. I'll let my head turn. And that's going to be holding against West Virginia State. So we'll see what the call is, or we'll see what's going to be done here, but it looks like they may have to kick it again. And we'll have to kick it again. So 
So now Schmidt back to punt. And he's going to get it off again this time. And it's going to go back. It's going to take a state bounce. Rolling back. Whoa, wait, rolling back to about the 31-yard line. That is where the Fal Falcons will, fighting Falcons will take over offensively. So a timeout taken. We're going to take it as well. We'll be right back. You're watching the MEC Network. It's a small word, but at Fairmont State University, you are the focus of everything we do. Over 80 fields of study, hands-on classroom experiences, teacher mentors who challenge and guide you. Our just right size lets you get involved right away and gives you a leg up on the competition when you start your career or into graduate school. You may be a small word, but to us, you are a pretty big deal. In fact, you're the biggest deal because at Fairmont State, it's all about you. Welcome to your home among the hills. At West Virginia Wesleyan College, you'll unearth new passions, be exposed to fresh perspectives, and find what drives you. This place of discovery is where you can become a scientist, a leader, an athlete, a performer, a friend. Opportunities include research, internships, and study abroad. Plus, our vibrant community makes for experiences you'll never forget. Discover yourself at West Virginia Wesleyan College. And we're back. It's first and ten coming up for Fairmont State after the punt as the Yellow Jackets started. Now, and it's going to be handed off, and they're going to stick to that same running play to the right side that they like to go to, and that's going to be a gain of about five on that one. So that'll make it second and five coming up as Fairmont State approaching 150 rushing yards on the ground tonight. That'll be a gain of six, actually, second and four from the 37. And it's faked a pass thrown and caught, and that'll be enough for a first down for, Fair, for Fairmont State, their third pass completion of the game. Fanden on the tackle. So that'll make it a first down for Fairmont State at the 42. As Kobe Harris gets his first reception. Renan, it's going to be a everyone's sick. It's faked. Oh, they're going to throw it again. Thrown across the middle. And again, Harris on the reception. And he's going to get close to a first down. So Fairmont State, after only four pass plays in the first half, open up the second half with two of their first three plays being pass plays. And that's going to be their second first down here on this drive as now they are past midfield. And that's Washington in motion, and it's going to be Floria under some pressure. He takes it, and he's drugged down in the backfield. And that was Quisi Tillman, number 45, that got back there to make the play, and that's going to be a loss of about two, or about one, so that'll make it second and 11 here with... About 12 minutes to go here in the third. Two first downs so far on this drive for Fairmont State, both through the air. And again, they 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 were effective through the air when they threw. They did have a 32-yard, and they had it first and 33 after a couple penalties and ended up a, a, a big gain from Tillman on that as as that ended up result uh, Tibwell that resulted close to a first down as that one's going to go for about three. That was Washington on the run, so that's going to make it third and about nine. So they and they are three of six so far on third down conversions tonight, and I believe this is going to be the longest attempt that they've had from that distance. And they need to get past the 37 yard line. Of, of the Yellow Jackets to get the first down. Floria is going to drop back, has time, pass thrown to the outside and complete. 
And that is going to be good for a first down. Good protection, good setup, good pass, and that's going to result in the first down for the Yellow Jackets. So, that, so three first downs through the air on this drive now for Fairmont State. They, so they are really starting to spread it out. And it's handed off this time up the middle. That's Crosby and a flag down. And we'll see what this one is. That's going to be holding against the offense. So they've had a couple of those tonight. That's going to make it first and 20. And also that prior pass, I forgot to mention, that was Gage Michael on the – that was his first reception. And he's – Michael has had – you want to talk about a player that's made an impact for this team. Michael, the transfer from Kent State, has been – electric this this year for Fairmont State and just what he's been able to contribute in so many areas. Number 13, one to watch for as it's snapped. Floria, he's going to go downfield and it's broken up, but a flag and that's probably going to be pass or holding against the Yellow Jackets. Floria, an efficient six for eight tonight, has, has 81 yards through the air. He's been sacked once, also has 38 yards on the ground and a touchdown, leading his team in rushing, and that's exactly what it is, and that is going to bail out Fairmont State, giving them a first down, uh, definitely, definitely a legitimate penalty, but, uh, but hurts West Virginia State. So now a, a fresh set of downs for for the Fighting Falcons here as we approach the 10-minute mark and as it's handed off, that's Crosby, and he has a little bit of a hole, and he's going to get about three. Crosby now with his seventh carry on the night, and he has 34 yards, along with a 10-yard touchdown run in the first half. And we have a player... Down, down for state looks like cramps, so we're going to take a break and come back. You're watching the MEC Network. Dreams. You have dreams. You have dreams. A better life, a better job, a better you. So where do you start to build the skills necessary to get there? For more than 125 years, West Virginia State University has been educating generations of students who have gone on to change the world. At West Virginia State, you are not just a number, you are who you choose to be. You receive personal attention from award-winning faculty, You study in nationally recognized programs. You learn the skills that will get you the job you know you can have. No matter where you want to go or what you want to do, it starts at State. And we're back at second down and seven coming up. And man in motion. That's Harris, and it's handed off. No, Floria is, Flory is going to carry it for about two. So that'll make it third and about six. Stanford on the stop. So here we go. As and man in motion, it's going to be handed off, and or 
We have confusion, but they are able to utilize that and get the first down. I didn't know who had the ball. That was, that was Kobe Harris on the carry, though, and he was able to carry it for about close to 15 yards and getting a first down. But we'll see what the – and there's going to be holding – Called against Fairmont State. So we're going to replay third down. So that's going to make it third and about 15 coming up. So the Falcons will need, fighting Falcons, they will need to get about past the 22 of the, the Yellow Jackets to get the first down. And that was Harris's third carry of the year, and but what was a uh, he? He has 24 yards rushing on two carries, but that would have that wiped out what would have been a first down for the Fighting Falcons as West Virginia State shows blitz and it snapped Floria, and he's rolling out. He heaves it downfield. That might have been deflected. It's caught, but out of bounds. So now that's going to make it fourth and long coming up for, well, I believe that was Page that that was intended for. And, and he caught it, but he just couldn't quite bring it back, back in bounds. So that's going to make it fourth and 15 now for Fairmont State. And they are expected to send Scout Arthur in to punt. And the punt's up, goes back, and it's fair caught at about the three-yard line by Jawan Bunch. So now first and first down on the three for the Yellow Jackets. It's handed off, and that's going to be carried up the middle. So that'll be a gain of about one or two. It was like two on the play. That was Pessoa on the carry, and he's touched it quite a few times tonight, as mentioned before. Pessoa, who's... Up to about 47 yards now. And that's going to be second and eight. And it's snapped. Faked. Riddick's going to throw it. And it's caught. And that's going to be Johnson. And Johnson gets the first down for West Virginia State. Riddick's radar finds Johnson. And Nolan Johnson gets the first down for the Yellow Jackets. So that'll get them some plenty of more breathing room now as it's going to be faked and thrown, caught. And Vlad Butler cuts back plenty of room. He stays up. Butler first down. An extra burst of momentum from Butler, and that's going to be a first down. Smith on the tackle. A gain of 15 on that play, so... Two first downs now on this drive, both through the air. Reddick now eight for 13 through the air for 61 yards. Reddick, it's a double pump. He's going downfield, caught by Johnson, and he's putting on a burst of speed. Nolan Johnson, Nolan Johnson, Johnson Junction, as Nolan finds a sweet spot in the defense's coverage and navigates his way to the end zone for the touchdown.
What a catch. We're going to go back and look at that on replay. Nolan Johnson. What a reception. That is his second touchdown. Or no, they're going to mark it da back at the 10, actually. They are going to say he was out, it looks like. So that will not be a touchdown as it's handed off. Felder up the middle, and that will be a gain of one or two. Yeah, that was a uh, – or Pessoa, I'm sorry. Pessoa on the on the carry. That's – as he's, he's approaching 50 yards on the ground. It's Felder now, and they're going to move him to the slot. Empty backfield. And Reddick takes the snap. Pressure coming. They're going to lob it to the end zone. Caught by Felder. Touchdown, Yellow Jackets. And Felder on the touchdown reception. And again, that's something that they've utilized his abilities for. And Joel Felder gets on the board tonight. And, and now he's he that will give West Virginia State the lead here in the third quarter as for the first time tonight, as Schmidt will come onto the field for the extra point. It's up and good. So West Virginia State now leading 17 to 14. We're going to take a break and come back. You're watching Yellow Jackets football on the MEC Network, brought to you by Video Productions. It's a small word, but at Fairmont State University, you are the focus of everything we do. Over 80 fields of study, hands-on classroom experiences, teacher mentors who challenge and guide you, our just right size lets you get involved right away and gives you a leg up on the competition when you start your career or into graduate school. You may be a small word, but to us, you are a pretty big deal. In fact, you're the biggest deal because at Fairmont State, it's all about you. Welcome to your home among the hills. At West Virginia Wesleyan College, you'll unearth new passions, be exposed to fresh perspectives, and find what drives you. This place of discovery is where you can become a scientist, a leader, an athlete, a performer, a friend. Opportunities include research, internships, and study abroad. Plus, our vibrant community makes for experiences you'll never forget. Discover yourself at West Virginia Wesleyan College. And we're back as Felder has a 10-yard touchdown reception. We went back to that Nolan Johnson reception and looked at it. He wasn't uh, – uh, that one goes as that's going to be carried, and that will be a, a, a good return for Fairmont State. But flags down. Looks like that's going to be called back. But Johnson was not, we don't think, anywhere near out of bounds on that prior reception. Yeah, at least at the 10. Possibly the 14, but that's going to be uh, that's going to go against Fairmont State. Well, the penalties piling up a little bit here for the Fighting Falcons, as they they have that is their seventh penalty of the game. That one's going to bring them back a, a good bit and negate uh, what was an excellent kick return, as now they're going to start with the ball first and ten from their own 10-yard line. As now that's going to be Crosby in the backfield with Floria here on this first down. So under six minutes to go here in the third. Man in motion, that's Michael. And it's going to be handed off. Crosby cuts back, looking for room. And he's going to go up for a couple more flags hit the ground. We'll see what the official call is on that, but it goes in the field of holding, I would say. And that's what it is. So that's going to move Fairmont State back. So that'll make it first and about 15 for the Fighting Falcons. So 
now as Floria comes in with a play for his team. And, I mean, if I'm the, the Falcons, I just try to keep doing my thing. They they had a first down, just gotten it and called back to holding on the last drive and just have to watch those penalties as Floria is going to throw. He's going to go for the long ball, and it's incomplete. Oh, flag second down. So Fairmont State uh, opening it up here through the air in the second half. They they only threw it four times in the first half. 30 of their 34 plays were running plays. This time, the, in the, they, though, they have thrown it six times here in the second half. Completing it four times. They have as many completions as times they threw it in the first half. Here's it's going to be second and 15 now for Fairmont State. As Floria drops back, it's a quarterback draw. He's going to look for room on the right side. Breaks through a defender and is going to bring, gain about seven. And that's the thing. He is a big, big, strong man. Hard to tackle, and he's going to get his team a little bit more breathing room and make it a much more manageable third and seven now coming up here. And they will need to get past their own 20 to get the first down here with under five to go in the third quarter. And Fairmont State, they are on on third downs. They are four of eight tonight as the receivers are bunched tight. And Floria drops back on the pass, throws it, and passes incomplete. That'll make it fourth down. Now as the punting unit will come out for F Fairmont State. Now Arthur in to punt for, for the Falcons. That'll be Bunch down to back to return, and it's punted back, and Bunch will call for the fair catch. So West Virginia State will come back out with the football first and 10 on their own 49-yard line to start this drive, so they're able to hold the Falcons to a three and out. which their last drive resulted in a touchdown pass to, to from Reddick to Felder. As Reddick now will 11-16 through the air, 142 yards and a touchdown pass, and also 33 yards rushing as it's going to be first down, and the ball snapped. Reddick, he's going to throw it, pass caught, and Moore with the catch, stiff arm still on his feet, and he's going to have the first down for the Yellow Jackets. So. So nice catch by Javion Monroe as he's going to get the first down. Uh, now it's as they are in Falcon territory, and it's handed off this time. It's going up the middle. Felder's going to carry it for f about six. And other than about a, uh, other than though a 12-yard run, I mean they've bottled up Felder pretty well, and until that run, he's at 29 yards on nine attempts tonight. I mean you take away that 12-yard run, and it's 17 on on the other eight, so under two yards a carry, the exception of two runs. As now the officials are discussing something, there's a flag down. And we'll see what the call is. And that's going to go against the Falcons. So the Falcons just being eaten alive by penalties here in the second half. And we're going to try to get... See what that is here as it's going to be first and 10 and putting the Yellow Jackets in the red zone as Reddick completes the pass. It's going to be a double pass, pass thrown to the end zone and oh, incomplete. Pass was intended for McAdoo. 
That last penalty was a personal foul, so a little razzle-dazzle coming from the Yellow Jackets, but it's incomplete, so that'll make it second and ten now. And it snapped Riddick. It's a pitch to Felder. He's going to break through a defender, cut back, and gain about four. Nearly had him in the backfield, but that's going to make it third down and six now as the Yellow Jackets will need to get past the, the Falcons' eight to get the first down. Here comes Big Nate Baker, number 42, and probably for his blocking abilities. He's caught the ball twice this year. So that'll, that'll make it now actually third and about seven here for the Yellow Jackets. As Reddick takes the snap, and he fades it to the end zone. Pass intended for Bunch is incomplete. So that'll make it fourth down. And now Schmidt and the field goal unit coming on to kick. So it's a little razzle-dazzle attempt on that drive. Tried to throw a double pass, threw it to Johnson on the, what looked like a screen, and then he tried to McAdoo. That was incomplete. And two, and then the subsequent plays did not work out. Schmidt's field goal is up, and it's good. So West Virginia State takes a 20-14 lead with 2.38 to go here in the third quarter at Dickerson Stadium and Lake and Ray Field. We're going to take a break and come back. You're watching Yellow Jacket football on the MEC Network. Life, things aren't scripted. If you're an athlete, we need people like you and translate those skills to officiate. You can get a lot out of it. It happens in every town, in every game. We never have a perfect game, but the rewards always outweigh the negativities. West Virginia State scores on a field goal by Schmidt, a 31-yarder, and now that's going to put them ahead as they, they have trailed. They trailed 14-3 in the first half and have scored 17 in a row here as Schmidt kicks off, and that one's going to be caught and returned, and it's going to be brought up close to the 25-yard line. As it looks like Samford was in on that one. So now here with 2.31 to go in the third quarter, it's going to be Fairmont State football and the, the Fighting Falcons having some trouble with penalties in this second half. As just looking at the we'll – go to the summary here on this one. They, they have 90 yards in penalties on the night. On the day so far. So here we go. Man in motion now for the Falcons. And it's snapped. Fake to Washington. And it's a screen pass thrown. And Washington, I think, some miscommunication on that. So that one is incomplete. Second down. So that, that'll make it, and Fairmont State really opening it up. Kind of at the point now, I'm surprised they're not trying to stick with that bread-and-butter run game that worked so well for them the first half. Picked up over 140 yards. Four guys rushed above 30 yards as Giacomo goes in motion. So 
And it's uh, – no, handed off. That's going to be Crosby left side, and he's met. A flag down, though. And we'll see, and it looks like they're going to call holding and some frustration being showed by the Falcons. Uh, that's going to make it second and long now as I think no question another passing situation coming up. Of course, I mean, you have a lot of options that you could go to. Oh, here we go, second and 20. They need to get past the 36-yard line to get the first down, their own 36. And it's snapped. Uh, it's going to be handed off up the middle. That's that Tidwell again. Looks like him. As that, that is, that's going to be a gain of about five. So now that's going to make it third and 15. So now they'll break huddle. And Tibwell in the backfield. And they brought in an extra blocker as well. West Virginia State showing pressure. And they're looping the line. It's thrown downfield. And, oh, close. Pass, pass was intended for Harris and incomplete. So that's going to make it fourth down. That was Martin that got in there and made the deflection. So fourth down. And, and it honestly looked like for a second that Harris was going to possibly have it. So now Arthur back into the game to punt. And it snapped back. And it's a good kick. And Bunch back to return. And he's going to... And let it roll, and that's going to go back to the 31-yard line. This is where West Virginia State will take over. So the Yellow Jackets have scored 17 in a row going back to late in the first half. They trailed 14-10 to 10 at halftime. And so far, Felder has a touchdown reception here in the second half along with, or, or, and, and along, along with a field goal from Schmidt. So here we go, first down, and that's Pessoa that's in the game at running back, and he's he's had a good good night running the football. And here we go, and a big guy's going to carry it up the middle and get about five, noting him past 50 yards rushing on the night. That's his seventh carry. He's got has 53 yards, including a 30 yarder in the first half as they're right back on the ball. And he's going to carry it again and get a first down for the Yellow Jackets. Like Blair was in on that one. That's going to be a first down for the Yellow Jackets. And they may run. Now they're going to run another play before the end of the third here. As Riddick in the backfield. And it's snapped. He's going to fake it. And a throw to Bunch. And Jawan Bunch with the catch. And the first down, that's his his fourth reception on the ga game. He has 30 yards, and that will – a flag down, though. And that's going to be holding against the Yellow Jackets, so that will negate what was a good catch by Bunch. And move this one back. We'll see where the official spot is. It's going to be about so 10 yards, so that'll make it first and 20 for the Yellow Jackets here coming up. And, well, nope, that's going to do it. So at the end of the third quarter, 
West Virginia State leads Fairmont State 20-14 to here at Dickerson Stadium, Lake and Ray Field. Tyler Rowland, we will be back here with more fourth quarter action on the MEC Network. Health coverage for your family, your employees, and your company is one of the most important decisions you can make. The health plan proudly supports our active and healthy communities and has been your most trusted carrier for over 40 years. We are here for your family. We are here for your business. We'll be here for you when you need us most because your health coverage is our priority. The health plan here for you. Hi, I'm Keith Powell with Yes Chevy and Yes Ford. And right now at our Let's Trade Keys event, give me the keys to your old ride and pick out the keys to any car on my lots. And your payments will stay the same until 2024. But hurry, I can only help the first 77 people only at Yes Chevy in Hurricane and Yes Ford in Huntington, where every car comes with a lifetime warranty. And we're back here starting the fourth quarter after a holding penalty. It's first and 20 for the West Virginia State Yellow Jackets. Falcons showing blitz. Riddick rolls out under some pressure, and he's going to throw it out of bounds. The Riddick, who's 12 of 19 on the night, on the day, I keep wanting to say night, your day, and has 155 yards through the air, including a 57-yard completion to Nolan Johnson. Now that will be second and 20 coming up. So now they need to get past the Fairmont State 48 to get the first down again, showing that same blitz off the left side. And pressure coming. It's a screen pass. Felder on the catch. He's a little couple moves, and he's going to get about five on the reception. Felder had a 10-yard touchdown catch earlier, and now that'll be a gain of five, making it third and 15 coming up for the Yellow Jackets. And penalties have been somewhat the story of the second half, and, I mean, overall, the two teams combining for – I mean, 150 yards and penalties, although the Falcons with 100 tonight on that end. It's now third and 15 as Riddick he takes it. He's going to throw a pass, and it's caught by Bunch. Deflected right into his hands. I thought it was going to be picked off at first, but Bunch will catch it regardless of the situation, though. That will make it fourth down. So... It'll be fourth and about six coming up for the Yellow Jackets, as I imagine they will send Schmidt and the punting unit out. And that's exactly what they'll do here with 13.44 to go in this one as the Falcon defense holds and Schmidt comes in. And that is Kobe Harris back to return for the for the Falcons, and Schmidt takes it. Its kick is deep, and Harris will call for the fair catch and get it, so that will set up the Falcons with the ball first and 10, starting here on their own 13-yard line. Well, both defenses, I feel like some good adjustments made in the second half. As now we'll see what the Falcons decide to do. I mentioned they ran at 30 of their 34 plays in the first half and had a lot of success doing that. But the second half more, they've opted to go to the air as they've thrown it eight times here in the second half, or half compared to four in the first. And Floria is right on his averages. He's 6 of 12 for 50%, 81 yards through the air. But also, he's having a heck of the night running the ball. 47 yards on the ground, including a touchdown run in the first half, picking up his 10th career rushing touchdown from the quarterback position. 
You know, wouldn't be surprised to see them here as the teams are in timeout, but wouldn't be surprised to see them here. But a, a heck of a good show, a heck of an atmosphere here today at West Virginia State University. And be sure to check out, we had President Eric Cage on at halftime with us to talk about the university and some of the accomplishments both on an athletic and an academic scale. So be sure to check that out and some of the great things and programs that are going on here as now Fairmont State coming back out onto the field. And it's going to be first and ten coming up. That's Washington in the backfield with Floria. At the bottom of your screen, that's number 13, K Michael. Gage Michael at wide out. And then Hunter as well, number nine. And it's snapped. Floria drops back. He has time thrown across the middle and caught by Hunter. And that'll make Hunter's third reception of the game. And it's a big one for a first down. So good protection provided by that big offensive line up front. And now that's going to get, give Fairmont State some more room to work with. And it's snapped, handed off Washington right side. And he's met right in the backfield. As that's number five, Justin David in on that. I see him. I see... I see number 36, Jalen Jones. And then Blake might have been back there as well. Him and Xavius Hager as well that was back in there. Good pursuit from that defensive front. So that will make it second at about 13 coming up now for the Falcons. They need to get past their own 37 to get the first down. And Flory is going to snap it. They're sending four. It's thrown and caught by Michael. And he's going to fall forward for an extra yard or two. And that'll make it third and about three now. So now the Falcons, who are third and nine on third down conversions, with a third and pretty short field to work with. with they need to get to, uh, two, actually, for the first down. And it's handed off. They're going to go to Washington up the middle. Breaks through a defender. And that is going to be close. I think he got it, but I think that's that's going to be a close call. And he did. That's going to be a first down. So Washington able to keep his momentum going and fall forward for the first down. The three first downs on this, or two first downs on this drive now for the Falcons. As it's given again, and this this time it's taken to the outside, but Crosby won't not able to get anywhere, and a flag down. That one was late. And that's going to be oh, against, oh, wow, that's going to be an unsportsmanlike against West Virginia State. That's the first one of those believe that they've received tonight, and that's a costly penalty as that would have made it second and ten. Instead, now that's going to put the Falcons in Yellow Jacket territory. So a fresh set of downs for the Fighting Falcons coming up. As they have Giacomo with the slot back position, man in motion. And it's going to be handed off. No, it's faked. Floria looking, looking. And he's under some pressure. Throws it, and it's caught for a first down. Uh, and it looks like... And that was complete to, to Cage. The page, that was a first down. So that'll make it another first down for the Falcons. And... Again, throwing the ball quite comfortably on this drive. That's three completions, three good completions they've had. So now this is going to make it first and ten as they continue to move deeper into Yellow Jacket territory. Here as they're going to go bunch formation. And it's snapped and handed off up the middle. And that's not going to get but a yard maybe. It looked like that was Crosby again. They bottled him up pretty well here in the second half. So that'll make it second and nine. 
as they'll need to get past the 35 to get the first down. Six different players have caught the ball tonight for 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 the Falcons. Of course, you consider how last they've thrown that six of their the nine completions have gone to six different players as it's handed off to Tidwell. He's going to take it up the middle and gain about four. Or two, actually, I should say. So that's going to make it third down. And, I mean, realistically, this is probably two down territory for the Falcons. So, actually, that's going to be a gain of one, third and about eight now, doing a much better job on the rushing game here in this second half. As the Falcons had a 142 for the first half, 26 here in the second. And Flory is going to throw it, and the pass was intended for Harris, and they might have gotten a hand on that at the line, and that's going to make it fourth down. Although this may be two down territory for the Falcons, it is. As they're going to try to go for it here. As the Falcons went for it earlier on fourth down, and was able to complete it, as that's going to be Tibwell at the running back position now. Split wideouts on each side, and it snapped. Floria looking, looking, has time, rolls out, and he's going to throw it. Pass is caught for a first down. And that's Gage Michael with the reception. Plenty of time to... Throw and that's going to be a, and we have a player down. That's going to be a, a, a we're going to take a quick timeout. You're watching the you're watching Yellow Jacket football on the MEC network, brought to you by Video Productions. What are you working for? Do you want to pursue your athletic potential while earning a degree that will benefit you for a lifetime? Do you want to play at the highest level in your sport? Do you want to be a champion? That's what the proud members of the Mountain East Conference are advancing toward every day. Providing opportunities and pursuing excellence. The Mountain East Conference. back and and the player good news was able to it looks like get off on his own will as now it's going to be first and ten coming up for the Falcons after the gauge Michael reception and it's going to be handed off Tibwell he's going to get about three maybe four Michael that was a get that was a huge catch a gain of 20 yards on that last play though that was a Big, big fourth down play. And Michael, that was his, I believe, his third reception on the night. As now it's going to be second and seven coming up for the Falcons. And here we go. It's snapped. Or no, Tidwell will carry it, and he's going to gain. Or he may not get back to the line. That'll bring him back. Hager and Jones on the stop. That'll be a loss of one. So that'll be third down. So they'll need to get past about the four-yard line to get the first down. And it's thrown and caught. And Crosby looking for room, but he's not going to get there. That'll be a gain of about one. A 
McMart on the stop. Gain of one, so this is going to be fourth down here with just over seven minutes to go. Second half, the Yellow Jackets looking to try to keep their hopes alive to win the MEC after they defeated Charleston last week. As they have it, fourth and seven on the, the ten-yard line of the Yellow Jackets. And it's snapped. And it's fake to Crosby. Floria pressured. He's going to throw it and incomplete. The Yellow Jacket defense holds. And they will get the football back here with 6.36 remaining in the game. So just after a great drive from the, the Falcons that went nearly the length of the field, the Yellow Jackets are going to take over first and 10 on their own 10-yard line. So two for three tonight on fourth down conversion. The Falcons as now State will come back out. And that's Felder in the backfield with Riddick. And the ball snapped and it's handed off. Felder spins, goes up the middle and he's going to be brought down after a gain of about five. That was number two, Javon Jackson, with the tackle. As he's approaching, has over 70 tackles on the year. So second down, and it's going to be handed off. Felder again is going to hold, and I, no, I didn't get the first down. He's actually about a, over a yard short. Maybe that's going to be third and a long one. So now the Yellow Jackets, a chance to trim a little bit more clock off as they are four of nine tonight on third down. Although they had a third and short early that they tried to run the jet sweep to Butler and struggled to get it. And Riddick, he's going to throw it across the middle. It's caught by Monroe. First down, Yellow Jackets. And that is the fifth, 15th pass completion for, for Riddick tonight. Riddick, who went over, who tonight went over 550 pass completions for his career as a Yellow Jacket. Gets the first down. And it's he's dropping back. Riddick's going to throw it again. This time it's caught again. And this time, who else? The ball came out. Falcons get the football. Looks like the Falcons just took the football out. We'll take a look at that again. A flag down as well. So you see the completion. Thrown and caught on the little curl route. And it's taken. Yeah, that ball was just ripped out of there. But a flag down. We're going to see what this is. And this is, this is going to be a crucial call. Officials huddling together and discussing. So the, the ball was ripped out. So there go, looks like it's going to be a block in the back. Against this means Fairmont State would retain possession. Or no, that's going to be a personal foul. So that's going to go against Fairmont State. We'll move them back 15 yards, but they will have the football at midfield. So again, the Yellow Jacket defense will be tested coming up as, as now the... What a play by Fairmont State. So now it's going to make it first and 10 from the 50-yard from line. 
So Floria now, him back fielding. That looks like it's cross. I handed off up the middle, right side, and that's going to be a, a fight for a gain of about five. So Crosby's going, going to, that's going to be a gain of about six. It's Crosby up above 40 yards rushing on the night. The second and four, and gosh, the Falcons, they have a good balance of backs that can carry the ball, a good stable. Is, that's going to be, as they have four guys approaching 10 carries as Floria, and he's going to run it, and he carries it first down. Floria, plenty of room, and he's going to get past the 30-yard line, and and that will be a big gain of about 18 on the play, 16 on the play. So a, a big run, more flags. Third flags down. Okay, not the case. So <laughs> I was expecting to give the way tonight's game's gone. So first and ten, no flags for the Falcons now as it's handed off Crosby. He's going to take it and get maybe one. So second and nine coming up for the Falcons. It's Jeter on the stop. So I think here, I mean, I th you've got a lot of options if you're the Falcons. I, I think, honestly, that running guy, I think you, especially utilizing Floria the way they have, I mean, he's having a big night, 64 yards running the football. And it's going to be thrown over the middle, and pass was intended for Harris, and incomplete. And lucky that was, that may have honestly been a holding penalty on the defense that was... So now third and nine. Samford on the breakup. So now they will need to get past the West Virginia State 18 to get the first down. The Pat Falcons will as we approach the three-minute mark remaining in this one. As it's third and nine, Floria, and it's a draw handed off. Tibwell's going to carry it, get close, but not quite there. A well-executed play that gets seven. Of course, you have to remember they're in two-down territory. As we have a time injury timeout, we're going to be right back. You're watching Yellow Jacket Football on the MEC Network, brought to you by Video Productions. You have dreams. You have dreams. You have dreams. A better life, a better job, a better you. So where do you start to build the skills necessary to get there? For more than 125 years, West Virginia State University has been educating generations of students who have gone on to change the world. At West Virginia State, you are not just a number, you are who you choose to be. You receive personal attention from award-winning faculty, You study in nationally recognized programs. You learn the skills that will get you the job you know you can have. No matter where you want to go or what you want to do, it starts at state. And there, we're back. We have a player down, still tending to him at the moment. And we'll certainly provide updates as, as that's going on. But... Um, but right, right now, uh, it's going to be a fourth and two situation coming up for the Falcons as they're getting ready here. But we're going to take one more break and come back here. You're watching the MEC Network. Health coverage for your family, your employees, and your company is one of the most important decisions you can make. The health plan proudly supports our active and healthy communities and has been your most trusted carrier for over 40 years. We are here for your family. We are here for your business. We'll be here for you when you need us most because your health coverage is our priority. The health plan here for you. What are you working for? 
Do you want to pursue your athletic potential while earning a degree that will benefit you for a lifetime? Do you want to play at the highest level in your sport? Do you want to be a champion? That's what the proud members of the Mountain East Conference are advancing toward every day. Providing opportunities and pursuing excellence. The Mountain East Conference. Hi, I'm Keith Powell with Yes Chevy and Yes Ford. And right now at our Let's Trade Keys event, give me the keys to your old ride and pick out the keys to any car on my lot. And your payments will stay the same until 2024. But hurry, I can only help the first 77 people only at Yes Chevy and Hurricane and Yes Ford in Huntington, where every car comes with a lifetime warranty. Our mission as educators is to help you grow, explore, and achieve your aspirations. When our seniors graduate, they receive more than just a diploma. They leave Wheeling University with clarity, purpose, and the confidence that they need to succeed throughout their career. Exceptional experiences, exciting opportunities, meaningful guidance, and lifelong friendships. This is the foundation in academic excellence we believe in. That's the Wheeling University difference. back the injured player is Eric Jeter but I do have some good news he got he got up and got off the field on his own will I think he took a bit they're coming out in power formation and trying to sneak up there as as West Virginia State will call a timeout so we'll just keep it here since we I have to say a good sport, show of sportsmanship from both co uh, coaches on that last one they both came up the West Virginia State and the Fairmont State coaches to to, 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 to just to talk about the I believe over the injury and everything and um, of course uh, both coaches pleased to see that he got up and you know on his own will did Jeter but it's going to be a fourth down situation you have a lot of options here if you're Fairmont State I mean you can you can have I mean Floria I think he's having it's safe to say I've, I've think they're going to utilize him in some manner on this with his power. They like to get in that formation like they just did and have him plunge it up the middle. They got a touchdown run off of that earlier. But definitely some good things going on on that end. Of course, um, I mean, and, and, and definitely, I mean, uh, and I mean, there, there's some, it's going to, going to be interesting. Of course, Fairmont State, who, um, I mean, Floria, who led them on a 16-play, 78-yard touchdown run that ended in the go-ahead touchdown with 10 seconds to go against Charleston. And here we go. Floria's going to carry it. Oh, that's going to be close. That's going to be, I think they're going to indicate that he got it. So, Floria, again, that big body plows through, and he's going to get the first down. That's a hard quarterback to stop because, I mean, you look at, like, his ability. I mean, his throwing ability, but he has good vision, like, with how he hits those holes so well. He just knows where to find that right seam in the defense, and he was able to hit it just enough to get the yardage he needed to keep the drive alive. So 2.30 remaining in this one here. As the timeout situation, West Virginia State has two remaining. Fairmont State still has all three. Bunch formation. And it's going to be handed off. Reverse coming as Harris is stripped up in the, right at the line. And State, looks like State indicating, uh, first indicating they had the football. Jai Martin got back there and laid out an electric tackle as that's going to be second and ten now coming up for the Fighting Falcons. And they will need to get past the eight of West Virginia State to get the first down. That's Washington in the backfield. Him and Floria. 
As it's Twins wide out, safety blitz coming. Floria under some pressure. He's going to throw it, and that goes out. State one in grounding, that's good, but that's going to be third down and ten coming up now. As Michael comes back in for the Falcons with the play. So third and ten coming up. Crowd getting into it again. Bunch, uh, twins bunch formation coming up. As that's Crosby in the backfield and Floria, he's going to lob it to the end zone to Michael. It's caught, but oh, it's he's in. Touchdown Falcons. Wow. And a flag down. I'm going to lean. That's probably going to lean in the area of unsportsmanlike, but we will see. So the, the fade route is thrown to the end zone, a beautifully thrown ball, and caught by Gage Michael for the touchdown. We'll take another look at that. You can see it goes up and barely. Oh, wow, one foot just... Barely kept his tiptoe dragging in, and that is good for the touchdown. And now Richardson coming out to put the extra point up. 123 remaining in this one. Or no, that, so that's going to be a sideline warning, the penalty it looks like. So we'll see on the... So now, now Manuel Richardson will take the, the snap. Or Arthur will yeah, as snaps back, kicks up, and good. Fairmont State takes the twenty-one to twenty lead. With 123 remaining in this one, we're going to be right back as well. We have a, a flag down. We'll see, but we'll be right back. You're watching the MEC Network. Health coverage for your family, your employees, and your company is one of the most important decisions you can make. The health plan proudly supports our active and healthy communities and has been your most trusted carrier for over 40 years. We are here for your family. We are here for your business. We'll be here for you when you need us most because your health coverage is our priority. The health plan here for you. Hi, I'm Keith Powell with Yes Chevy and Yes Ford. And right now at our Let's Trade Keys event, give me the keys to your old ride and pick out the keys to any car on my lot. And your payments will stay the same until 2024. But hurry, I can only help the first 77 people only at Yes Chevy in Hurricane and Yes Ford in Huntington, where every car comes with a lifetime warranty. So we had an unsportsmanlike penalty against the Yellow Jackets on the extra point attempt, and now that will result in Fairmont State with the opportunity to kick from the 50. And it's going to go back into the end zone, make it touchback number 17 on the year for Richardson. So now State will start with the ball first and 10 from their own 25. They have two timeouts remaining. Fairmont State has three. So here they come. That's, that's Riddick and Felder in the backfield. Bunch and Johnson at the bottom of your screen at wide out. And Felder's going to switch spots. And first and ten coming up here with just over a minute to go. Riddick drops back. He's going to throw. It's caught by Monroe, and he's going to plow forward and get close to a first down. I don't think he quite got there. So second and one. Of course, this is pretty regular for 
West Virginia State to run their fast-paced offense at second and one now coming up with just over a minute to go. Riddick making an adjustment at the line. And Riddick will drop back. He's going to throw it to the outside. It's caught first down and then some as it's a bell. What a carry. And that is Monroe again with the catch. And it's going to make it first and ten for the Yellow Jackets as they will have a momentary stoppage and clock. And it's going to be snapped and... And spiked, looks like it. Well, we'll see first down. Oh, it looks like he spiked that for a second. With the Okay. So the clock stops, but it's going to be second down. So second and ten coming up for the Yellow Jackets here as they pass midfield. And Reddick drops back a throw to the outside, and it's incomplete. It looked like there was miscommunication on the route that was to be run. As that was intended for mostly. So that's going to be third and ten now coming up for the Yellow Jackets. Of course, their kicker, Schmidt, seven for 11 on the year. As Riddick, he's going to throw it across the middle and in and out of the hands of Monroe. So fourth down coming up. And the Yellow Jackets today have not had a th fourth down conversion. The Falcons are three for four. And I'm imagining they're going to send some pressure on this fourth down at Riddick as he has to get 10 yards to get the first. 40 seconds to go. Here we go. Fourth down. Here comes the pressure. Riddick going to go downfield. Incomplete. And that does. And a flag down. That's probably going to be an unsportsmanlike penalty against the Falcons, but we will see. That was tried to get it downfield to mostly. But we will see what the call is. I'm going to lean that it's unsportsmanlike against the Falcons, and that will probably just move them back 15 yards. But we will see. And that is the case, so they will they will get to keep the ball, though. So 115 yards of penalties tonight for the Falcons. And that was... So the Falcons hang on and make a, a big... Turn of events in the second half, both on the offensive and defensive play. All they have to do now is kneel it down to, to walk out of Dickerson Stadium with a win, and the Yellow Jackets will fall to 4-4, four and four, while the Falcons will improve to 7-2. and two. They will definitely need, some, I think, some things to go there to fall in their favor to be able to win the conference. But regardless, this is a big, big win on the road for the Falcons. And Floria tonight, of course, I mean, you could say make a great case for him as him and Michael, who had the game-winning connection earlier. So that will that will that will do it for this one as Fairmont State walks away with a 21 to 20 victory in what was a hard fought battle, a valiant comeback in the second half by West Virginia State. They trailed 14 to three, and then Fairmont State though able to come come in late, and when it looked like West Virginia State was able to put it away, they were able to f force a fumble. Or, and, or strip the ball and come out of here with a, 
but make a, and then make a touchdown connection. Come out of here with a win. We're going to take a break and come back. You're watching Yellow Jacket Football on the MEC Network, brought to you by Video Productions. Health coverage for your family, your employees, and your company is one of the most important decisions you can make. The health plan proudly supports our active and healthy communities and has been your most trusted carrier for over 40 years. We are here for your family. We are here for your business. We'll be here for you when you need us most because your health coverage is our priority. The health plan here for you. What are you working for? Do you want to pursue your athletic potential while earning a degree that will benefit you for a lifetime? Do you want to play at the highest level in your sport? Do you want to be a champion? That's what the proud members of the Mountain East Conference are advancing toward every day. Providing opportunities and pursuing excellence. The Mountain East Conference. Hi, I'm Keith Powell with Yes Chevy and Yes Ford. And right now at our Let's Trade Keys event, give me the keys to your old ride and pick out the keys to any car on my lot. And your payments will stay the same until 2024. But hurry, I can only help the first 77 people only at Yes Chevy in Hurricane and Yes Ford in Huntington, where every car comes with a lifetime warranty. Our mission as educators is to help you grow, explore, and achieve your aspirations. When our seniors graduate, they receive more than just a diploma. They leave Wheeling University with clarity, purpose, and the confidence that they need to succeed throughout their career. Exceptional experiences, exciting opportunities, meaningful guidance, and lifelong friendships. This is the foundation in academic excellence we believe in. That's the Wheeling University difference. Tomorrow's innovators, teachers, caregivers, researchers, leaders, and creators all have one thing in common. They started out just like you. At West Liberty University, you are the focus. This is a place where you will gain the skills, knowledge, and confidence to change your life and the world around you. It all starts here, with you. Visit westliberty.edu to start your journey. It's all here at West Liberty University. And we're back. You're watching Yellow Jacket Football on the MEC Network, brought to you by Video Productions. And Fairmont State comes in and gets a big win on the road against the Yellow Jackets today. And it was a 20-yard touchdown pass from Michael Floria to Gage Michael that was the impetus behind that. That I mean, that was the main play that did it. But, gosh, just a tough showing from the Yellow Jackets in the – Second half. Well, thank you, buddy. As got some numbers here, some final numbers here. And first off, just looking through things. Um, my gosh, penalties today. Fairmont State had 12 for 130 yards. West Virginia State nine for 90 yards. Fairmont State had way more in uh, their time of possession. 37 minutes, 32 seconds compared to 22-28 for West Virginia State. That's what I mentioned about that power running game that they utilized early. They ran the ball for Fairmont State did for 202 yards compared to West Virginia State, 135. And that's saying something, especially with a back like Felder for the Yellow Jackets. It's been so impactful. And then West Virginia State, though, had more through the air. They were 18 for 30 with a touchdown Pass. No interceptions against the team that led the country in interceptions coming in in Fairmont State. And then um and then Floria twelve of twenty three, not great. I mean a touchdown pass, not super great numbers, but again, no interceptions. Again, continuing. I mean he he may not have the best completion percentage, but he sure knows how to 
be an efficient and an effective player. He also led the team in rushing 67 yards or 66. Yeah, 66 yards, including a touchdown run. Crosby had 42 on 11 and a touchdown run. Washington 40 on 10. Hatcher 33 on 7. Michael had 57 yards receiving on four receptions and a touchdown. Hunter had 29 on three. Tibwell had a screen pass in the first half that he took for 31 yards. Giacomo would catch early for 19 yards. Scout Arthur, who's been a – I mean, a good good punter in the MEC. Um, he earned MEC Player of the Week honors in Week Four after averaging 41 yards per punt, placing three in the in the 20 yard line versus in Notre Dame College. And I mean, tonight five for 204 and one inside the 20. And uh, Brockton Blair finished with 11 tackles, leading the way. And then for West Virginia State, Pessoa led the way with 59 yards on eight carries, including a 30-yarder in the first half. And you have to credit the Fairmont State defense for holding Felder to 42 yards and a touchdown on 13 carries. 33 rushing yards for th on three carries for Riddick, who went 18-28 in the air for a touchdown in 18-29. And then Johnson went 0-1 on a trick play. Receiving, J.B. on Moore. Monroe had, I'm sorry, 57 yards on five receptions. Bunch had 27 on four. Johnson, 76 on three. Butler, 33 on three. Felder had one for a touchdown catch of 10 yards. And t defensively, Thompson had seven tackles. Um, and, and Schmidt did quite well punting. Three punting, 158 yards. 148 yards on three punts, including a 56-yarder, two that went inside the 20. So the scoring, it was in the first quarter, 943 remaining. Crosby for Fairmont had a 10-yard rushing touchdown to cap a 69-yard 69 11-play uh, 69 drive. Then Schmidt for State West Virginia State hit a 22-yard field goal with 114 remaining in the first to cut it to 7-3. Floria would rush for five yards to cap a 10-play, 74-yard, 8-minute, 19-second drive to take a 14-3 lead with 7.46 to go in the second quarter. Felder would respond with a one-yard run out of the Wildcat in the second quarter to cap a 13-play, 75-yard, 5-minute, 59-second drive to, uh, with 146 remaining in the second quarter to cut it to 14-10 to after the Schmidt kick. And then... The second half, Felder would score on a nine-yard pass from Riddick on a six-play, 97-yard, two-minute, 21 second drive uh, with 5.57 to go in the third. 2.38 to go in the third. Schmidt hit a 31-yard field goal to cap a 37-yard six-play drive, 2.38 to go in the third. And then with 1.23 to go, that is 20 to 14, and then there's 1.23 to go, Fairmont State, Gage Michael complete, get, get, catches a 17-yard pass from Michael Floria and the the Emmanuel Richardson kick made it 21 to 20 which would end up being the final score tonight so the the Falcons improved to 7 and 2 again doubling their win total from last year coming into tonight and then and then the the Yellow Jackets fall to 4 and 4 so we want to thank you though for tuning in tonight I'm Tyler Rowland and we will be Back here on the 11th when the, the West Virginia State has their next home game. But God bless you. Thank you for tuning in and watching. And we will see you next time. You're watching Yellow Jacket Football on the MEC Network. Brought to you by Video Productions.